Hello and welcome back to another episode as part of our special series on amplifying growth, achieving impact. I'm Pallavi from People Matters. Through these exclusive and exciting conversations with decision makers and industry leaders in partnership with Upgrad for Business, we will zero in on three critical themes like role transformation, reducing skill obsolescence and employee engagement. Each of these themes have a decisive impact on your talent and business strategies and is a driving force as you innovate for the ever evolving future of work. As we bring to you strategic insights on upskilling a future ready workforce, the key takeaways will be gathered uh, through these interactions with industry leaders and captured into an ebook, uh, which would be titled, How Do We Empower Organizations to Thrive in the New Age Economy? For today's session, now we'll discuss around role transformation and, and the key focus areas will be pressure onboarding and digital skills. While digital skills are topping the priority list for L&D plans these days, how can organizations decide on which skill set to prioritize? Most importantly, as new roles arise, how can they ensure that the freshers hired have the right resources and training to excel in these positions? To answer these burning questions and much more, I'm excited to welcome Vinay Trivedi, Global Head HR, Admin and Travel at TerraPay, a seasoned HR professional with over 15 years of industry experience. He has an extensive background in talent management, engagement, and acquisition across various sectors like IT, ITS, BFSI, FinTech, and the startup ecosystem. A passionate leader who believes that uncertain times call for unconventional approaches, he is driven to make HR more human. We also have with us Minakshi Indra, President of Grad for Business. Minakshi has two decades of business growth experience across companies like IBM, Cisco, SAP, LinkedIn, Uber, and now Upgrad. She's a purpose-driven leader, passionate about people's transformation. She leads the Upgrad for Business and Upgrad Work Better teams, focusing on bringing outcomes-driven learning programs for her customers. Welcome, Vinay and Minakshi, to this panel today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure to be Thank here. Thank you. So as we navigate the different facets of role transformation, we've witnessed the rising importance of digital skills. So I want to start with you, Vinay. Uh, as we can see, there continues to be certain gaps, challenges in empowering a digital workforce. Um, what are your opening remarks on that one challenge organizations need to address immediately to close this digital skills gap? I think um, um, one challenge that organizations need to address um, is the validity of these certifications people take to bridge the gap. Um, I, I don't think availability of uh, knowledge is anymore a challenge, which possibly uh, four or five years back, we would have said that we don't have enough training modules, we don't have enough learning uh, uh, support systems in place. But I think the biggest challenge is that how can these learnings translate into actual work scenarios and how can they be valid? That's an industry problem that we need to address. Sure. I mean, actually, anything that you would like to add on? Any suggestions you want to make to this? Sure, Pallavi. So I resonate with what Vinay has said. Um, and what I would add on is, irrespective of the industry, digital transformation is everywhere. Uh, most, when we look at most of the companies that we are speaking with, the biggest digital skill gap that companies and leaders are talking about is that in the domains of data, data science, data engineering, artificial intelligence, machine learning in a broader sense. Pallavi, in fact, I was reading a recent study by Gartner over the weekend, which mentioned that 60% of managers don't think that their employees are able to keep pace with the future skill needs. And surprisingly enough, about 70% of the employees in that organization feel that they don't even have the skills they need to do their jobs today. Correlating this to productivity enhancement, we have a McKinsey Global Institute research that estimates about 60% of potential productivity increases by 2030 will happen through the adoption of digital technologies. And I think you've landed us on a very, very interesting uh, question. All said and done, most companies believe that the easiest and the fastest way to fill this ever widening skills gap is to of course train their employees in-house. And the reason I share this data points is as a suggestion to our audience on how to really bring this together. Businesses and HR leaders can address these gaps at an organization level by assessing their current workforce and identifying skill adjacencies. What I mean by this is, for example, in my organization, if Python is a skill that I need in my organization and I see that there's a dearth of talent, I can look for my own employees with advanced skills like Java, Perl, and train them in Python. 
This way, my own employees will pick it up rapidly with a shorter turnaround time for the business. And I would say this would be the, the best way to get ahead of the curve. Uh, well, Vinay, as we're starting this whole conversation, I want to also congratulate you uh, for the tremendous growth journey Terrape has seen in the last, say, 18 months. The way you thought ahead about ramping up the technology to serve your customers better and felt the need to have an extended learning partner and you chose Upgrad for it. So it would be great if you could share uh, about the role Upgrad for business played as your extended l and wing and its strategic impact on business regarding agility and optimization. Sure. You know, as a, as a startup, um, you don't have everything in place. But uh, the fact of the matter is that for any organization to grow, you need everything in place as of yesterday. Uh, a lot of functions like training, learning, and development uh, are things that take time to set up because of two reasons. One, uh, you, you need to, as an organization, know where you want your people to be trained, what you want to do. You're scaling so rapidly that before you realize that, okay, this is a requirement, you would have had another set of challenges on top of it. Uh, and that was one one situation that we were in last year um, when we were scaling our technology teams very rapidly. And this is amidst the great resignation uh, scenario in across the world, actually, not just the country. Uh, so it was hard to find talent. Uh, we had to get used to talent that we get because we said, we'll grab talent, we'll see how we can uh, effectively manage that by training them or by, by having interventions planned for them. So we had to sort of work on strategies that would support that. Um, then when we did find our talent, we realized that the talent needs to be productive. Uh, now that we've found and we said we will train them, we had to um, get into a zone where we had to start training uh, or figuring out how to train these people. So we, we did a lot of research analysis. We had a lot of partners, I, I, I must be honest, that went through this process. And then uh, we realized that uh, Upgrad could be one partner that we could uh, start off our learning journey with uh, for our training requirement uh, on the technical side. So after all the evaluations, we signed up with Upgrad. Um, and uh, we definitely had a happy time working with them uh, in training our people. Well, that was interesting to know. Uh, in fact, Manakshi, uh, you're a strong believer in how role transformation through role-based learning paths can help in smooth transition into newly opened job roles within a company, within an organization. Uh, it'll be good to know how Upgrad for Business ensure that the freshers at Terrape get the right support uh, during these uh, fresher training programs. And were there any parameters to check You know how the learner transfer is happening, the impact is happening? Uh, sure, Pallavi. So um, uh, when I did speak about briefly in terms of um, how they ran this program and the vision that they had, um, for us as Upgrad 2, the, the experience for the learners was paramount. Um, we were very clear that it should help the learners, the new employees get skills. Um, they should look at the organization as a larger partner in the whole gamut of the great resignation. So after discussions uh, with Vinay, we solutioned this program for Java and Advanced Java for a pre-chosen set of employees at Terape. Um, given this whole learning journey was spread across month, um, it was critical for us to ensure learner fitment, commitment, and engagement throughout the program. So if I were to say these were the, the core elements that we were always thinking and executing on. Uh, for this, we brought in three levels of governance model. The first was at a strategic review level, the second at an operational review level, and third one was focusing completely on the learners. So if I were to break this down, the strategic review happened with our business stakeholder like Vinay, wherein he was our guiding force. We had quarterly reviews, monthly reviews, weekly reviews to look at where we are with the program, what's the vision for the program, what's the business outcome that we are looking at. The second was with our key custodians in terms of the everyday or the day-to-day, -day, which became the operational rigor and rhythm for the program. This is where we spoke about the program held, the real-time dashboarding, um, reviews in terms of what's working, what's not working, and of course, seeking help from each other. The last, but the most important was really focusing on the learners. We monitored their usage, their consumption on an everyday basis. There were multiple query resolutions, student success mentors, nudges, um, weekly reporting, reminders, gamification that was done. Uh, when we looked at all three, three elements together, we brought in the program management capabilities across the entire length and breadth of Upgrad. And as we ended the program, 
it was truly gratifying that we saw this effort translate into results. Um, at the end of this program, we had the Terrapay learners give an overall feedback of 4.4 on a scale of five, which is way ahead of the market standard. We also had 50% of Terrapay learners coming back and telling us that they had more clarity on the topics that was covered. 86% of them said that they were very confident of applying these learnings on the job that they are doing or the projects that they're doing. And last but not the least, they overwhelmingly came back and said that they got enough practice on the concepts that they learned so that it will stay with them for a longer period of time. When I bring this all together, this is what the power of a, a robust learning intervention means. And there are, again, elements of learners, the, the partner, which is us in this case, and the company and the vision of the stakeholder, which is Vinay in this case. Back to you, Pallavi. Sure. In fact, talking about the impact and the vision, uh, Vinay, it will be more um, you know, interesting to know from you uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about the learner impact and uh, you know, with this whole uh, program that you did uh, with, with Upgrad and how did it strengthen your L&D strategies for the long term, like from a business perspective, if we could understand. So uh, I must be honest, right? From a, from a uh, startup perspective, because we do not have uh, a learning and off development department itself, right? I kept telling Upgrad that uh, I don't have a learning team. You are my learning team. And you will behave as if you are employed within Terrape while we work on this program. So this ha had to have a lot of change in approach uh, to an extent where uh, if a learner is not logged into the program, is not active, I went there and supported uh, the team, the, the, the learning team, in saying that I will say reprimand the employee for not joining the call or for not responding to an extent where if somebody is not in the program, we said we will hold your salary as well. Right now, these are these are very extreme points. But the point is, this is our commitment to making sure that the program itself is successful. And as a partner, when Abrad is trying to help me. Uh, in upskilling my people or helping my people garner skills that are required for the job, uh, we have to be supportive. Right? Uh, we we always had a conversation with Upgrad asking them what else can we do to make sure that the learners are benefiting. Instead of uh, normally, what happens is when you have like a uh, you know you have a third party training, right? Uh, you more often want to see how you can blame the third party for not delivering up to the mark, right? Uh, it's a natural phenomenon. Say, oh, but you should have done this. You should train like this. You should do like this, et cetera, et cetera. So first thing we did is we set up this, uh, which Manakshi mentioned. We had a very, very rigorous governing mechanism where I would get onto these calls personally to see how the progress is. Second thing that I uh, I really appreciated uh, about the partnership is uh, we would be very, very, very heavy on upgrade as a partner. Uh, if something is not being received well by the learners, so if, if, if somebody says I've not understood the concept, I would go to Upgrad and say, can you please redo this again? Uh, and there have been multiple locations where they had to, to, in bits and pieces, redo a lot of things just to make sure that the learners are comfortable in understanding what is supposed to be understood, right? Uh, so that support was 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 very good and, and definitely helped the program curate well, the program actually become successful. Uh, third thing that... Uh, that we that that we did uh, differently is uh, we kept moving back and forth on the topics uh, while they're being covered to just see if uh, say for example we had a list of 10 things that had to be covered now they are being covered but at some point we realized that maybe topic number five needs a little more depth than we originally envisioned we would immediately go to course correction and request a black saying that, hey, can you look at these four topics to be slightly deeper than what we originally thought? Can you, you know, add that into your uh, learning agenda? So there's a lot of agility required by uh, Upgrad because we are discovering our requirements while the training is being conducted. Um, so, you know, agility, governance, and making sure that the learners are, are invested uh, are three things that uh, helped us in achieving jointly what we wanted to achieve. So that was my experience, really. And and that's why, uh, to to see what Minakshi is saying, in not just court, I see them um, in, in the office delivering, right? I don't have any, say, performance improvement plan issues from any of these people who've gone through the courts. They finished this in Jan, Feb, and March. We are in December. That itself is a proof enough that there, there is a good learning understanding. So... Uh, that's how I, I, I rate this program as a successful one. 
That's so wonderful to know that how it's impacting so many learners. Uh, well, Munakshi, no conversation can be complete without, uh, you know, uh, talking about digital transformation. And we're talking about digital skills here. So as a learning partner, uh, what would you recommend to businesses, especially leaders as they think of digital transformation? Well, thanks for that, Pallavi. And in fact, if I could just um, come back to um, the eloquent way in which um, Vina has spoken, um, it's very heartening for us when stakeholders like Vinay and his organization look at us as their extended arm. And in fact, that's, that's who we are as an ethos of an organization. We, we do not believe in this whole paradigm of, hey, you're coming in as a, as a training consultant or a training company. We, we love it when companies really are that forthcoming and open in terms of, hey, this is my setup, these are my business challenges, let's do something together. And Vinay, uh, there are very few, but very strong leaders who, who look at this aspect. So it is very gratifying. Like I said earlier, my team absolutely adores the learners at Terrapay, and I'm sure we'll do many more things together. Again, uh, Pallavi, coming back to your uh, query, um, we've spoken about the transformation journey for new employees or freshers. Um, in my mind, it is equally important to discuss the competencies and the journeys that we need to build for leaders who actually reside on the other end of the spectrum. And more often than not, as companies, we tend to take it as a given that our leaders would know it all. Most of the times that's true, but there's, there's no substitute to lifelong learning or an ongoing journey of learning. In this day and age, digital leadership is more than leaders just knowing about the digital technologies. I would say it's more about being digitally dexterous and doing that empathetically as well. So the yin and the yang of this is, one, for leaders to have the knowledge, and second, know how to communicate this and communicate this with empathy. This means staying ahead of digital trends, digital technologies, the new age work that's happening, is, op is application so that businesses can get optimal results. In one of my previous episodes, uh, we spoke about how empathy is one of the most critical skills for the future. In my mind, it separates the good leaders from the great leaders. It takes a great leader to be able to understand, empathize with employees' emotions, before they react and speak about the business goals and the, and the business priorities. And keeping this at the core, Upgrad for Business actually built a very specific program, which is actually called Digital Dexterous Leadership Program for new age businesses, legacy companies, and startups um, to ensure that leaders are able, agile, and adept, both digitally and empathetically. Uh, we've seen the quantifiable outcomes coming out of this program um, I could give an example here. We've worked on this with a global leading engineering company and post application of the learnings, the leaders who were mostly in revenue roles were able to guide their teams better. And their sales pipeline improved by 60% within three to six months. That's a very, very startling data point. That's a very positive data point. Um, lastly, Pallavi, what I would say is as we navigate the uncertain future, it's very important for our learners to, um, and our leaders to be on deck with both technology aspects and most importantly, the human aspect of upskilling, which should encompass the entire employee life cycle from new workforce and the leadership layer. And for those of our audience members who are keen to know more about this, uh, my coordinates will be available as part of this multimedia book. And I'm more than happy for conversations around this. Surely. In fact, Vinay, as we wrap this whole conversation on digital skills and role transformation, uh, what would be some words of advice uh, or something, any message that you would like to share with our community on empowering a digitally skilled workforce? You know, I um, and thanks for asking this question. Um, I, as, as philosophical as it may sound, but um, today there is no dearth of knowledge being available uh, easily. Like, like, like we say, disposable income is easily available. That's why people are spending so much in the country. Similarly, availability of training programs is not a challenge. Uh, if I want to upskill, if I want to upgrade, if I want to uh, change myself, I have definitely more than two options available in the marketplace to go ahead and, and acquire that skill. Um, if there's anything that I'd like the community to understand is uh, three things. First is... Don't upskill because it's a FOMO. Um, you know, um, I, I, I need to have the certification. It'll look good on my profile, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so don't upskill because of FOMO. If you are looking at adding a certification, upskilling digital skills for any reason, 
make sure that you have two or three learnings out of that certification that you talk about to implement in your work, uh, working life. Because if you don't do that, then the certification is as good as, you know, uh, not being, uh, not being there. Third one is not, not to the, to the learner community, but really to the, uh, teaching community or to the corporates, right? Uh, we tend to expect the moon out of a pressure uh, by, uh, and I'm sure Minakshi would agree with this, when they're designing, say, campus to corporate programs, when they're designing a lot of these upskilling programs, right? We tend to get very excited to become aspirational. Let's understand that when you sit to eat a meal, there's only that much that you can eat that's on your plate. You can't add 100 things and expect that to be eaten. Similarly, when you're looking at giving knowledge to people, uh, don't be aspirational in trying to get everything done in two days, three days program, in certifications, in, in bundling up multiple things, because it's not taking anywhere. The reason why some of these certifications fail is because there's so many things, it's information overload that uh, people are not being successful. So to the teaching community or to the community that's curating these courses or corporates that are expecting these programs, uh, take a little pause, take a deep breath and see what's relevant that needs to be delivered. That will definitely make it more impactful uh, than having a plethora of things just to tell that we do these things, we do these things, we do these things. Mm -hmm. So these are my three, sorry, a, a, a slightly longer answer, but there are three specifics that I, I want to mention. Then I'd like to add in, I, I wholeheartedly uh, resonate what you said. Uh, in fact, we always talk about quality over quantity and and this temptation that you spoke about, right? Like I have these learners, let me kind of just give them all the possible information. Uh, we know that application of learning takes time. So it's important to build those deep skills, deep learning. And, and I see that um, happening wonderfully well at Terrapay. So thanks for sharing this nugget. I beautifully explained. And thank you so much, Vinay, for bringing up, uh, bringing uh, this up, you know, at the conclusion of the session. Uh, well, thank you, Minakshi, as well, for sharing all those fantastic insights. It was wonderful listening to both of you uh, and, uh, you know, learning from Vinay, how you scaled your organization and your incredible learning journey uh, you shared with us on this platform. Uh, so that's all in today's session. We'll bring up more exciting and impactful takeaways on empowering organizational growth strategies in our upcoming episodes uh, stay tuned for our next discussion thank you for being with us thanks Vinay. thanks thank for you for having us